Sawadikap, I'm JP Mistanza. Welcome to Phuket Extra, brought to you by pvcphuket.com. The head of Thailand's Department of Medical Services admits that it's unrealistic for Thailand to target zero local infections during a potential second wave of COVID-19, as says the country should reopen to revitalize the economy. Dr. Somsak Aksilp, the Director General of Thailand's Department of Medical Services, is backing the proposal to accept international tourists into the country, saying that the country is well prepared to handle a second wave of infections. He told the Bangkok Post, quote, We cannot afford to maintain zero cases forever. We need to reopen the country. The country must move forward and people have jobs to do. This means we may have to see a small number of infections, but if we work together to prevent them, the country will be able to achieve a balance between public health and the economy. He went on to say that the country does have enough N95 masks and PPE in the event of a second wave, as well as the ability to treat patients across the country up after upgrades were made during the pandemic. The special tourist visa scheme, which allows international tourists to enter the kingdom for 90 days and are able to extend twice, each for 90 days at a time, it will move ahead as a group of 150 Chinese nationals were scheduled to land in Phuket earlier this week, but it's been delayed until later this month. For more, visit thephuketnews.com. Reports say that some 15,000 domestic tourists Reports say that some 15,000 domestic tourists will be heading to Phuket each day during the island's annual vegetarian festival from October 17th to the 25th. Phuket International Airport GM Dani Chuang Chu says that about 90 domestic flights are expected daily during the festival, 10 more than regular weekends and long holidays, with the potential to generate about 200 million baht for the local economy. At the moment, Phuket welcomes some 13,000 domestic tourists at the airport during weekends and long holidays, and the annual vegetarian festival will be the first event in a series of local celebrations in Phuket aimed at luring back tourists. This year's vegetarian festival will still have street processions, but will not include any self-mutilation or many of the usual ceremonies like the blade ladder climbing and fire walking. For more, visit thephuketnews.com. The Royal Thai Army has been engaging in information operations, setting up many social media accounts to sway public opinion in their favor. Well, Twitter and Facebook, but mostly Twitter, they put a stop to it and they've removed 926 accounts linked to the Royal Thai Army disinformation campaign. In a statement early this morning, Twitter announced that they've identified and investigated 1,594 accounts worldwide all associated with five different countries or networks that violate their policy of manipulation, with those countries being Iran, Saudi Arabia, Russia, Cuba, and Thailand. Those 1,594 accounts were all removed, and 60% of those accounts were linked to the Royal Thai Army. In a statement, Twitter said, quote, our investigation uncovered a network of accounts partaking in information operations that we can reliably link to the Royal Thai Army. These accounts were engaging in amplifying pro-RTA and pro-government content, as well as engaging in behavior targeting prominent political opposition figures. Coconuts Bangkok did a fantastic breakdown of this story, and while we don't go too in-depth here, should go read the article, we'll give you some highlights. Firstly, these accounts linked with the army, they refer to critics as stupid and nation haters, calling opposition leaders, bastards, and more. Back in February, Thailand went through its worst mass shooting in history when a soldier from the Royal Thai Army killed 29 people as well as himself and wounded 58 others at a popular mall in Nakhon Ratchasima province. During and after the whole two-day ordeal, the army's Twitter network went to work to redirect any criticism away from the army by highlighting the quote, great job the army had done and distancing the army from the actual shooter who was a soldier in their ranks. Most of the accounts were created in late 2019 and have now been taken down. For more, visit thephuketnews.com. The head of the Department of Special Investigation, the DSI, Thailand's FBI, he's arrived in Phuket with a team of investigators to inspect the land plots occupied by the Sri Panwa Resort on Phuket's east coast. The investigation followed the Secretary General of the People's Network Against Corruption filing a formal request on September 25 to DSI to investigate the resort's claim to the land it sits on. 
A six month investigation is now underway and it all comes after comments made by the owner of the resort against anti-government protesters last month. For more, visit thepuketnews.com. 1.1 billion baht, that's how much the airports of Thailand, the AOT, paid to people living near the Phuket International Airport as compensation for noise pollution. Phuket International Airport GM Tani Chuang Chu revealed the news at an event in thurs on Thursday marking the 32nd anniversary of AOT operating the airport. In fiscal year 2020, the AOT paid 1.1 billion baht in total to households in four communities surrounding the airport. And so far, 63 households altogether have been paid in full, with payments still ongoing to 536 households, all compensation for the noise pollution from the airport. For more, visit thepuketnews.com. An apology is now in the works for American national Wesley Barnes, the man who's being sued for defamation by management of a resort after he gave them a negative online review. The agreement, which was signed this week at the Seaview Resort in Koh Chang by Barnes, his lawyer, and representatives from the resort, it stipulates that Barnes will issue a formal apology to the hotel, its staff, the province, for as well for hurting their tourism reputation. And reports say it has to be published in media outlets, all as a way to finally resolve this dispute. The whole thing began in late June, when Barnes stayed at the Seaview Resort in Koh Chang and gave them a negative review on TripAdvisor and Google, accusing the hotel of slavery with their staff and adding a racist comment about one of the hotel's managers who is Czech. The hotel responded by filing a defamation lawsuit against him and issued a statement defending their actions. After the suit was filed, immigration police tracked down Barnes in Samuprakan province. They brought him back all the way to Koh Chang, where he spent two nights in jail before finally making bail. The story has made international headlines and seems to finally be coming to an end. Six new COVID-19 cases announced in Thailand today, all once again arrivals from abroad, this time Nepal, Norway, the US, and Myanmar, with the total for the nation now at 3,628, with 95% of patients recovered, and the death toll unchanged at 59. And that's it for Phuket Extra today, brought to you by pvcphuket.com. For safe, secure, and soundproof windows, visit pvcphuket.com. We hope you have a safe and fun weekend out there, wherever you are. Thanks for watching us today and any day you happen to click on our link. We'll be back on Monday with all the news you missed. Until then, stay classy, Phuket. คุณมองเห็นอะไรไหมครับถ้ามองไม่เห็นเดี๋ยวเราจะย้อนภาพให้ดูทีละมุมถ้ามองจากรถที่อยู่ด้านหน้าคุณจะเห็นชายขี่มอเตอร์ไซค์ตามมาด้วยความเร็วปกติถ้ามองจากคนที่นั่งอยู่ข้างทางคุณจะเห็นชายขี่มอเตอร์ไซค์ผ่านไปด้วยความเร็วปกติแต่ถ้ามองจากคนที่ขับรถตามหลังมอเตอร์ไซค์คันนี้มันติดติดไม่มีไฟท้ายก็เหมือนไม่มีคุณอยู่บนถนนตรวจสอบไฟท้ายให้ใช้งานได้อยู่เสมอ